The Los Angeles Rams are nine months removed from a Super Bowl victory. Through 10 weeks this season, the Rams are 3-7 and seven in our last place in the NFC West. The Rams have been really bad, historically bad, for a defending Super Bowl champion. A Super Bowl hangover. It's a very common idea, but not necessarily an actual thing. What? but the Rams are proving that wrong this season. Only seven teams coming off of a Super Bowl victory have ever had a losing season the next year, two of which I wouldn't even really count. There was the 1982 49ers that went 3-6 and six, and the 6-9 and nine 1987 Giants, but both of those were strike years, so that wasn't even the actual roster that won the Super Bowl. I don't really think that counts, but that leaves five. The 1968 Packers went 6-7-1 and one after winning it all, but Green Bay knew what it was getting itself into because Vince Lombardi did retire after the season. Then there was the Broncos in 1999 that went 6-10, and 10, but again, there was a good reason for it. John Elway retired. That leaves really three teams that have had a Super Bowl hangover that weren't predicated on a strike or a head coach or quarterback retiring. The 1981 Raiders, 1988 Redskins, and 2003 Buccaneers. All three went seven and nine. And unless the Rams nearly run the table, LA is going to have a worse winning percentage than all of them. But why? I think the Rams' offseason decisions and losses have played a huge role in their lack of success this year. Left tackle Andrew Whitworth retired and guard Austin Corbett left in free agency. The loss of those two has been very, very apparent. That probably has been the number one problem for the Rams. Offensive line. Los Angeles has quite literally the worst line in all of football. I'll name the current starters and you tell me who you've heard of. Ty Nasecki, Coleman Shell. Brian Allen, Chandler Brewer, Rob Havenstein. You probably don't know many, if any, and as a Washington fan, I can assure you that if Ty Nisecki is your left tackle, you are bad. The Rams have issues all over the offense, but that is by far the biggest. Los Angeles did also trade Robert Woods to the Titans. He only played nine games last season before he tore his ACL, but nonetheless, a big loss. Among other departures, Von Miller leaving in free agency really has hurt the pass rush. Another huge glare issue for the Rams has been injuries, especially on the offensive line. Los Angeles impressively has six offensive linemen on injured reserve. Logan Bruss, the Rams third round pick, Tremaine Ankrum, Joe Newtboom, who just signed a three-year $40 million contract in the offseason, AJ Jackson, Chandler Brewer, and David Edwards. Not to mention, the Rams, in their most recent loss to the Saints, were without two linemen, Brian Allen, who just got a three-year $24 million deal, and Zach Thomas. Ty Nisecki also got carted off during the game and suffered an ankle injury. Even with all the injuries to the offensive line, the most devastating is to Cooper Cup. Cup suffered a high ankle sprain in week 10, and he is going to undergo tightrope surgery. He is literally coming off of a season where he led the league in both receiving yards and receiving touchdowns, had an NFL record 33 receptions in the postseason, and one Super Bowl MVP. Now the Rams are without him for at least four weeks, and some reports expect around eight weeks for rehab. Injuries have been a big concern with Matt Stafford too. He missed the Rams week nine game because he was in concussion protocol. Stafford was cleared for week 10, and then he left the game to be evaluated for a concussion. Back-to-back -back concussions is certainly a big problem for Stafford, but his health has been a topic all offseason. Stafford dealt with a lot of pain in his elbow last year and had a procedure in the offseason and later had an injection in that same elbow. He did not throw during spring workouts and then he was put on a throwing schedule in training camp. Sean McVay said that Stafford didn't have any limitations during the season though. Undeniably, Stafford has had his struggles. In his nine games played, Stafford is completing 68% of his passes for over 2,000 yards and 10 touchdowns to eight interceptions. Among 28 qualifying passers, Stafford graded out at 19. He has a 3.7 turnover worthy play rate tied for sixth most in the league and when under pressure Stafford has been sacked 27.5 percent of the time second worst in the league to only Joe Burrow the pass game has been bad and it does make sense why last year at Los Angeles had two wide receivers record over 200 yards in the postseason Cooper Cup and Odell Beckham Jr. 
Now, Cup is out for the year, and Odell isn't even on the team anymore. The Rams did try to bring in a new wideout, and there was a lot of buzz around him. Allen Robinson. Robinson had spurts of eliteness in Jacksonville and Chicago, despite bad quarterback play. The expectation was with Stafford on a good team that he'd break out, and we sure did think so, but that has definitely not been the case. Robinson only has 339 yards and three touchdowns and has been a major disappointment. It's not like the Rams have been able to run the ball at all either. The offensive line has been horrible and no running back has over 300 yards. Daryl Henderson has 283 yards and three touchdowns and Cam Akers has just 237 yards and one touchdown. Akers has been a hot topic this season and surely you're disappointed if you took him in fantasy. But this is really what was expected, I think. It's crazy that the Rams couldn't even trade him at the deadline. Line. But after an Achilles injury, nobody ever returns to 100%. He'll unfortunately never have that same explosiveness that he once did. The Rams have been known for finding a way to spread the salary cap, but Los Angeles is in a tough spot financially. The Rams had to extend some guys in the offseason. They gave Matthew Stafford a four-year $140 million deal. After Cooper Cup's triple crown, LA inked him to a three-year $80 million contract. Those were key pieces. I mean, that the Rams absolutely had had to extend. There's no doubt about that. There were a few other deals that were very expensive too. Von Miller got a five-year $50 million deal. Allen Robinson's three-year contract was for $46.5 million. And like I mentioned earlier, Joe Noteboom is making about $13.3 million per season. Add in Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, who are already taking up 25% of the Rams' entire salary cap this season. Donald is on a three-year $95 million contract, and Ramsey is on a five-year $100 hundred million dollar deal. The Rams are in a tough spot financially, but the money is tied up in good players. Los Angeles is a very talented football team, and their 3-7 and seven record is not indicative of that roster. This is the same roster that did just win a Super Bowl. I don't think anyone should waver on Sean McVay. He's a very good coach, and I have no doubt that he'll get this team back to being competitive fast. Injuries have been big, bigger than the national media has really made them out to be. If you're looking for the biggest reason why the Rams aren't good, it is 100% the offensive line. Some of that is put on the Rams. I don't think LA did enough to fix it in the offseason. They certainly didn't do a good job replacing Andrew Whitworth, who I think was the biggest offseason departure. I mean, just watch the Rams. The offensive line is getting blown up on run plays immediately. Matthew Stafford has no time at all to throw the ball. The Rams have been known for having good wide receivers in recent years, and that just right now is not the case. No Cooper Cup is huge. The Allen Robinson experiment is not working, and the reality is the Rams could really use another guy, like Odell Beckham Jr. or Robert Woods. Internally, the Rams have made some bad decisions. I have no doubt that they will find a way to be good again in the near future, but injuries, bad roster construction, and questionable financial decisions are the reason for the Los Angeles Rams' historic Super Bowl hangover.